This is the data entry portion for activity funding. In this video, we will walk through the process of funding an activity. The best way to learn IDIS is to get hands-on practice. I want to encourage you to log on to the UAT version of IDIS and enter the data as you follow the video. You can pause the video at any time by clicking the pause button in the lower left hand corner. You can switch back and forth between this video and IDIS by holding down the Alt key on your keyboard and then pressing the Tab key. If you're not already logged into UAT, pause the video and do so now. Make sure that UAT appears at the top of the screen. If you do not know how to access the UAT, there are directions at the bottom of the IDIS login page and also in Module 1 of this course. If you want to follow along in your manual, we will be in Chapter 4. We'll start at the home page of IDIS. To fund an activity, we will click on Funding Drawdown in the Navigation menu. This process will be the same whether you are funding an activity for the first time or adjusting the funding levels. The system by default shows the first page of activity funding, which allows you to search for the activity you want to fund. Funding an activity is done in three straightforward steps. First, select an activity. Then, select a funding source. And then, enter a funding amount. If you know the IDIS activity number, that's the fastest way to find the activity. If you don't know it, you can use any combination of the other search fields, or simply click Search to get a list of all of your activities. For the purpose of this exercise, select any of the activities you have set up during the other modules, or any CDBG activity with an open status. Once the results come back, you will see your options on the right in the Action column. We should see Edit and View. The View function will let you look at the data, but you won't be able to change anything. We want to be able to change the funded amount, so we will choose Edit. If you see the message Not Ready to Fund in the Action column, this means you have not completed activity setup. In order to fund this activity, you would need to first go back to Projects and Activities and edit the setup information for the activity. The system provides a summary of the current total funding at the top of the page and lists the available funding sources below that. The system provides filters for the funding sources. Most grantees will not need to use them, as they only have a few funding sources for CDBG. Let's take a look at each column of data provided in the funding sources table. First, you have recipient name, which for entitlement grantees should be the name of the grantee. Next, we have the program field which in this case should be CDBG. The third column is fund type. Page 4-5 shows the different fund types available. Everyone will have EN fund, which represents entitlement funds held in your line of credit. You may have PI, or program income. This represents a local account that receives receipts generated by CDBG funded activities. You may also have an RL, or revolving loan fund. This represents a local account that receipts funds that are earmarked for a particular type of activity, such as economic development loans or housing rehabilitation. We will discuss program income and revolving loans in more detail in Module 10. Other fund types include AD for administration and SU for subgrant subfund. Both of these are optional for CDBG grantees. They provide an extra measure of control over funding sources, but also require more work and knowledge of subgrants and subfunds. For more information about these fund types, please refer to Appendix I and J in your course manual. Source name and source type refer to the source of funds and are not that useful to the grantee. Available for funding represents the amount of money that has not yet been committed to activities. This will be the maximum amount of funds you can commit to the selected activity from the selected fund source. Every year, when HUD loads your new grant into the system, you will see the amount available for funding for the EN fund type increase by the grant amount. Each time you fund an activity from a selected funding source, the amount available will go down. When you complete an activity, any balance of funds that has not yet been drawn will be returned to the amount available. Ideally, the amount available for entitlement should be close to zero. If you have a large balance in the amount available, you may want to reconcile your books to determine where the funds should be budgeted. 
If you carry a large balance in the amount available field, it will adversely affect the timely expenditure of your funds. The next two columns show how much is currently funded and drawn from each fund type to this selected activity. The final column shows the actions you can take for each funding source. Let's click on Add Edit for Entitlement. On the third page, the system provides information on the activity and fund type selected. There are only two fields of data entry, the grant year and the funded amount. The grant year is an optional field for entitlements. It is required for states. HUD does not use this field since the system works on a first-in, first-out basis. This means if the 2008 grant is the oldest funds available, the system will automatically use these funds, regardless of the grant year you input on this screen. You can use this field to track the source year for your own records. You can also split the funding over several source years by using the Add Grant Year button. The second field is the funded amount. Go ahead and put in a number and click the Save button. The screen will refresh and give you a message at the top. If everything worked, the message will say Activity Funded Successfully. You will also see the amount available adjusted downward by the amount you changed the funding, and the amount in the funded column adjusted upward by the same amount. That's it for funding. If you increased funding, that funding will now be available to draw against this activity. In summary, we took three simple steps. We selected an activity, we selected a fund type, and we updated the funding amount.